Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, David, this restaurant's eyes are bigger than my stomach. Mm. Not a bad steak, is it? A mm. steak all right, sir? Mm, fine. It's enormous, waiter. Every mouthful I take, it gets bigger. Say, darling, are you uh, feeling all right? I'm feeling stuffed, that's all. Uh, people don't usually complain about how much food they've been given. <laughs> <laughs> this steak, it's a whole side of a, a, a cattle. For a farmer's wife, you know sad little about a cattle. That was the architect's wife in me talking. Yeah. Go on, eat some more. Don't talk so much. Mm. Don't you get tired of chewing? Well, don't you get tired of talking? I guess you don't get tired of chewing. The trouble with steak is all steak. A brilliant observation. What I mean is that after the first mouthful, the rest is exactly the same. It <laughs> goes right on being a steak to the bitter end. Only it isn't bitter. I suppose you'd prefer it if the... First bite was steak, and then the second veal, and the third lamb, and the fourth kidney, and the fifth liver. And... Skip the kidney. Otherwise, I think you've got something. Each mouthful would be different. Very interesting. A uh, repast for a gourmet. What was that? Mm-hmm. Eat your steak. Are you really finishing yours? I am. So delicious. I hope I can, too. So you like my backwood steak restaurant, I huh? love it. I actually think these steaks are cooked on charcoal. Of course they are. It says so right there. Oh, you're so naive. You believe everything you read. <laughs> oh, I hope I can finish this. I'd certainly hate to waste it. Mm, mm, mm. I'll never finish chewing it. Doesn't you want a little piece of it, David? Just a little piece. I most certainly do not. It's a crime to leave it behind. Then eat it and be quiet. I like eating out, don't you? I wonder how the baby is. You just left him an hour ago. Does that keep me from wondering how he is? No, I suppose not. It's funny how I always think of him first. After you, I mean. Oh, my feelings aren't hurt. For years and years, I didn't have any baby at all. I didn't even have a husband. You don't say. Now they're both second nature. Can't imagine myself without them. I don't even want to imagine myself without them. Oh, David, how can one person have so much? Well, you have too much, young woman. I know. But I mean steak. Oh, you. You just can't be serious. Not even about serious things. Most especially not about serious things. I don't want to get solemn. It's just that every now and then I yeah, feel... Yeah, I know, I know. Me too. David, I wish you weren't sitting all the way across the table from me. Good thing that I am. Have you forgotten we're in a public restaurant? I love restaurants, but now all of a sudden I wish we were home. You don't get a steak like this at home. I don't mean for steak. Are you complaining about Bertha's cooking? I am not. But there's some things that are better eaten out than in. Like what? Well, steak happens to be one of them. It's the charcoal. Oh. David, do you realize that you're paying at least $2 for the privilege of having one steak cooked on charcoal? I realize. It's an awful lot of money for a few burned-out pieces of coal or wood or... What is charcoal made of? Mm, nothing that you would understand. Mm. Well, anyway, it's very expensive. Do you ever think of anything but money and how expensive everything is? I told you I think of the baby and you some of the time. How am I doing on my steak? You haven't eaten it yet, but you're coming along. Look, sissy, don't, uh, don't force yourself. I will finish this steak or bust. You'll finish that steak and bust. Anything you say, darling. <laughs> You know, I sort of feel that all the time we spend living not on our farm is time wasted. You've certainly changed your tune in six months of farm living. Haven't I, though? You certainly have. When you grow as big a family as we are, David, we simply have to live on a farm. Why, look at Bluff. He's twice the size he was when we first bought him in New York. No, don't blame his size on New York. He was just a puppy when we first got him. Mm. He's, a, he's still a puppy, as a matter of fact. David, you don't suppose he's going to grow any more, do you? He certainly is. Oh my Bluff gosh. is going to be the 
biggest darn great Dane you ever saw. He is already. He's at least twice as expensive to feed as you are. Well, sometimes I think I get scraps. You do? How'd you get? <laughs> he is a sweet dog. A man should never be without a dog, you know? Nor a wife. What about her? A man shouldn't be without her either. Well, a dog's more important. Oh, thank a, you. A dog can't talk back. How are you doing with that steak? You're being so cruel. My steak is sticking in my throat. Uh, I get blamed for everything. That's what you're for, my man? Oh, David, I cannot eat another mouthful. <laughs> all right, all right, you don't have to. You want a dessert? Dessert? Mm -hmm. If I could eat dessert, I'd finish up this steak. Oh, I hate not to. David, you sure you don't want a little bite? Just Take a little bite. Take it away. Bite? Take it away from me. All right, all right, all right. You needn't get so huffy about it. I mean, stuffy. <laughs> I am stuffy. Well, and that's all we want for dinner? Make up your mind. Absolutely. Oh, look at your plate. It's so clean. My conscience is hurting me. It's not your conscience. It's your purse. You're right. <laughs> you just feel that if you don't eat every last scrap of steak, you're not getting your money's worth. I'm I know. getting indigestion. That's what I'm getting. Mm, waiter. 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 Listen, if you wanted a waiter now, darling, you should have started calling him a half an hour ago. Don't you know in steak restaurants, waiters are always looking the other way? In any restaurant. Oh, anyway, we're not in much of a hurry. Mom is a very undemanding babysitter. She's all alone in the house, though. She doesn't mind. Well, I, I don't think we ought to be away too long, though. You know, sometimes I think I married you because you're so sweet to my mother. That's why I'm sweet to her. Waiter! Waiter! I think you've caught his eye. Mm. My goodness, he looks angry at being disturbed. Listen, David, I hate leaving this steak behind. It'll get so lonesome. Look at that bone. Listen, I'll bet you that at midnight, just before I go to bed, I'll be so hungry, I'll, I'll wish I had this lovely cold steak bone to chew on. I love cold steak. Get that look out of your eye, Claudia. What look? You are not going to drop that steak bone into your pocketbook and walk out of here like a thief. It's my steak. You bought it for me. You're paying for it. I wouldn't drop it in my pocketbook anywhere, as some manners. I resent your implying that I would. Well, I wouldn't put it past you. But if I get hungry at midnight... You'll eat a graham cracker. I like steak better, and this is mine. I wish I could. <gasps> I now, if you have an idea, forget it. Oh, your check, sir? Yeah, yeah, that'll be all, thank you. Uh, no dessert, sir? No, no, thanks. Uh, the steaks were enormous. Oh, uh, madam, was there anything the matter with yours? No, nothing, except it's too big. I notice you haven't finished it. I wish I could, but I just can't. You know, it really is an awful shame to waste it, isn't it? Well, it can't be helped. Sometimes people Look, can't. Look, I wonder if you could do me a favor. Claudia? Uh, yes, ma'am? I wonder if you could just, just wrap this steak and bone up for me. You see, I, I have a dog, and he's a very big dog, and... Why, of course, madam. I'll be happy to wrap this steak and bone up for you. Oh, that'll be fine. Bluff simply loves steak, but we just don't like to buy it for him. Why, of course not. I have a dog, too, so I understand. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, I'll be back in a moment, madam, and Thanks. I'll... I'll bring the checks, sir. Thank you. Now, are you satisfied? He's very sweet and thoughtful about it, wasn't he? I guess people do this all the time. It's just that you're too hoity-toity. I think that is the lowest of the low. What? Blaming your weakness for not being willing to part with a thing on your poor, defenseless dog. Oh. Well, I thought you'd be embarrassed if I told the waiter it was for me. You have no conscience, absolutely no conscience, blaming Bluff. Huh? Well, it worked. So what's the difference? We should have told the waiter to wrap up a few French fried potatoes. Dogs don't eat French fries. Well, dogs don't, but I do. Oh, darling. Now, just for that, before we go to bed, if you're hungry, I'll be happy to share my steak and bone with you. Oh, I guess we better go up to bed. Oh, what time is it? Five of twelve. Stop yawning. You sleepy? Stop yourself. Mildly. Me too. Mm. Oh, it's been a lovely evening. I'm hungry. You aren't. I am. I knew I was going to be, too. I told you so early, remember? 
I've been waiting all evening to get hungry. Well, I don't see how you can possibly be hungry. You forget I didn't eat my whole steak. No. Oh, anyway, why should I make excuses to you? I'm hungry and that's that. Mm, What are you going to do about it? Eat, of course. Oh. I'm going to eat my steak. I'm going to nibble on that lovely bone. That will be attractive. I'm going to the kitchen. Hey, don't you at least want a glass of milk with me? I hate eating alone. All right, all right. I'm coming in. The least you could do is invite Bluff to watch you eating his steak. It's not his. It's mine. Steaks are too good for dogs. If I know you, you'd probably charge admission. (laughs) I think dogs are too good to be used for excuses, too. Dogs aren't good for anything except to be man's best friend. Now, let's see, where did I put my bundle, my loot, my treasure trove? It's in the back of the icebox, Long John Silver, where you told me to put it when we came in. Oh, where is... Oh, there it is, behind everything. Oh, I'm starving just thinking about it. You know, it's a good thing I had so much hindsight beforehand. Pass me a bottle of milk. There you are. Thank you, ma'am. Goodness, he certainly wrapped my poor little piece of meat up in a lot of paper. Look at the size of the bag it's in. You'd think it was a whole turkey or something. Wasn't he a sweet waiter? Anyone is sweet who does what you want him to do. Well, that's as good a definition as any. How are you going to eat any more steak? I'll never know. Oh, you'll see. Hey, pour me a glass of milk, too, to go with my steak. You know... Mm. I think eating any other time but mealtime is the best. I can't wait. I just can't wait. My mouth is absolutely drooling. David! What's the matter? Oh, David, look! Well, 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 well. What a lot of bones. Seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at them all. Oh, I could murder that waiter cheerfully. That sweet, generous, adorable, thoughtful waiter. You'll be eating these bones for a week. I won't be eating them at all. He's given me everybody else's bones. I can't recognize mine. As you go from bed making to vacuum cleaning, you sometimes stop long enough to switch the radio dial. Next time, stop just a little longer. Go to the refrigerator, get yourself an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola... And enjoy the pause that refreshes. Coke offers a pleasant break in your housework routine. It enables you to work refreshed. Uh, Hey, fella, just a moment. Uh, You speaking to me? Yeah. Uh, You're a friend of that lady who was here for dinner tonight. Uh, The one with the bones? I indeed am her friend. Uh, Maybe you'll be seeing her again soon? I'll be seeing her again tomorrow. Give her this for me. It's an awfully large package. Bones. Full of bones for her dog. Well, this is very kind of you. Ah, forget it. We dog lovers got to stick together. Well, I'll give Claudia the bones, but it'll be a little like uh, rubbing it in. Huh? Well, the fact that things didn't turn out quite the way she expected. But then they rarely do. Like tomorrow, Claudia and David go to the beach for a swim, and what do they get? Ducks. Just like bones. Uh, you feeling all right, fella? I feel fine. And, uh, thanks for the bones. So long. Yeah. So long. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.